All right, today is the day we're going to take a look at a few of the things that have been going on this week in the Erite project. I've been working on the ECU, uh, putting that together. That comes as a kit. It is a Megasquirt MS3, and it comes in this little, well, I can't say it doesn't come in this case. It gets put in this case, and originally that case is a black brushed anodized look and it is really kind of ugly so I thought that I would um, change that to a nice blue to match the car but we had some failures uh, learning a few things about powder coating I got this color this is a called intense blue and it gets it its intensity by being a translucent blue that goes over a chrome finish I thought I would uh, bypass a step because once I sanded the anodizing off, I had this nice polished shiny aluminum look and I sanded that to 400 grit thinking that was going to work great because the blue would use the aluminum as the reflective coating in the background. But two things happened. First, I can see the sand marks, that intense blue, the translucence just kind of like magnified the scratch lines. Um, I couldn't live with that, except for I also tried to put a, a vinyl logo on here. That's what I did. I put the vinyl on, powder coated it, and then before I cured it, I peeled that vinyl off and put a real light coating of the intense blue over the logo, so I thought it would be a little light colored blue with the logo and darker on the outside. But somehow the Faraday effect seemed to have uh, focused the powder right around the edges and its little piles in the middle and anyway it turned out really crappy so we took that aside got another case and thought i would follow the method according to the manufacturer of the powder and that was to put the chrome down and then the blue but i put the chrome on and liked the chrome so much i thought i would just stay with that i have learned some things in the powder coating that I guess the method I should have used is to start baking the powder and get it up to temperature to start melting, but not to cure completely. Take it out, then take the vinyl off. But I still don't know if my doing the second layer of powder would have worked. So like I said, we're gonna stick with the chrome and go with that. The other thing we've been working on Got some suspension pieces that we have run, printed up in the 3D printer. This is the upright or the wheel hub. I'll show you how that is going to go together. Put it up on something here because we don't want the knuckle here to hit the ground and hold that off of there. But this uh, printed model is what we use to try testing all the parts out. Here we have the bearing. It'll fit through there, lines up with the three holes in the end, the bolts will come through. We've tried and they seem to line up just great, but the bolts will come through the backside and hold this bearing in place. And this thing we got is the rotor, we'll of course hook into the bolts on the bearing. And then we have here, this is a brake caliper off of Porsche 911. These two holes here is where the caliper bolts on. It is a top mounting caliper rather than those styles that mount from the back. It will fit right there. The bolts will go through and that will bolt on. And as you see, everything seems to fit beautifully. So we have tried that and know that everything's ready to go on that. And as I was mentioning, learning this powder coating thing, um, according one coat of powder, pretty easy to do, but when you're trying to do multiple colors, and of course with this, we'll also try to uh, um, take off the Porsche logo and put our own on there when we powder coat those. Thanks to Kristen Clark. She is the only one that responded when I was asking in a video about what color we should do. We are going with the orange trim colors, and the caliper will be orange. Move all this out of the way. The 
because we have another part that we have 3D printed. This is the lower control arm in the front. Ball joint will be pressed into here once that's bored out. Holes bored in here. But these bushings will fit in here. Pulse in the front and back to allow that to jest back and forth for camera and caster control a little bit. We measured those, they seem to be just right. So this one is ready to finish to do some sand casting. This is gonna be used as a pattern, but 3D print parts don't really work real well in sand casting because all these super fine little grooves tend to uh, lock on to the sand and uh, hold itself in the powder. So this will need to be uh, finished down, sanded, and uh, maybe filled any little imperfections to make a pattern for that so we can sand cast that piece. We know this one's good, so we'll also print the reverse side, the mirror image that goes over onto the right of the vehicle. Anyway, one other thing that we've been doing this week that might be of interest to some of you. If you watched a previous video, I made a mold to reproduce this um, architectural piece. Cast a piece now, and we've got a video available so that you can go here and watch the making of the mold and also go and see this piece being made in another video we're going to produce this week. Anyway, that's what we've been working on. Make sure you go down and subscribe, ring the little bell so you can be notified about the videos that come available. And as always, thanks for stopping by and come and see us again.